glad to have you back and I'd like to talk to you today about Taylor Series. Now I've gotten some questions about this and I'm happy to answer them. I really like Taylor Series. They're really interesting and they're really useful. Um, so what I want to do here is I want to talk about the big ideas that makes Taylor Series work and then I want to tell you how to calculate some Taylor Series. I'll probably do those in following video clips. I'm going to use uh, MathCAD and Mathematica both, maybe in separate clips, I'm not sure yet. Okay, so let's start with the big ideas. And the big idea behind a Taylor series is a Taylor series is an infinite series. Okay, now this, is, this takes some real thinking. As an engineer, I tend to think of infinity as just some really big number, some number big, as big as it needs to be. Well, that's not really right. Infinity is a concept, not a number. No matter how big a number you think of, I can always add one to it or I can double it, or I can square it, or whatever. I can always make it bigger. So there's no biggest number. The number line goes on forever. And that's what infinite means, okay? Forever and ever and ever. So in order for this to work, all right, a Taylor series, which is an infinite series, gets used to approximate functions. If I have a function and it's, it's difficult to work with, I can turn it, I can make a Taylor series that's equivalent to it. The Taylor series, if you add enough terms, looks exactly like the original function. And so I can take a function that's a, a very inconvenient form and I can turn it into what amounts to a really, really big polynomial. Well, polynomials are easy to work with. So that's, that's why that's so useful. Um, so for, this to, to, for us to accept that a Taylor series is going to be handy, we've got to, uh, there's one big idea we've got to, to come to grips with, we've got to accept. Is it possible to take an infinitely long list of numbers, add them all up, and after I add them all up, have that sum not be infinity, to have actually have that sum be some finite number. All right? That's okay. I can add an infinite number of terms together and get a finite number. So let me, let me show you something. Let's, I'm gonna, this is going to be the, uh, a sum. I'm going to call this sum A, whatever A is. We don't know yet whether the A is going to be a number or whether it's going to be some infinite infinity. Okay, let's try this. Okay, this is just the inverse oops, powers of 2 all added up. Okay, and that three dots there means it goes on forever. Right? So this is going to be one, one half, one fourth, one eighth. Da, da, da. So let's do this. One plus one half plus one fourth plus one eighth plus one sixteenth plus one thirty two plus. Okay, and that's going to go on forever. Okay, plus one over two to the n plus. So this is what this infinite series looks like. There's an infinite number of terms. No matter how ter many terms you write down, there's always one more. Okay? Any idea what that equals? I had to go look this up. I didn't figure it out on my own. That converges to 2. Okay? Add all these numbers up and you get 2. Now I wouldn't have guessed, but that's how it turns out. So this is an example of an infinite number of terms that adds up to a finite number. That's a big, big, big idea. Right? I can approximate something, in this case just a number, but I could approximate a function by adding up all these infinite terms. Let me show you one other thing here. This is graphical. If you don't want to do this in, in algebraic terms here, let me draw a picture for you. Okay? So let's draw a triangle. Okay? And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say the triangle has sides, the, the, the length of each side is 1. And so the perimeter, the side length is 1, so the perimeter length is 3. So there's, it takes 3 units, maybe 3 meters to go all the way around this. Well, if I take and divide every one of those sides into thirds and add another triangle, I started out with an equilateral triangle. I'm going to add more equilateral triangles. That's not a very good one here. Let me try this again. That's slightly better. Okay, it looks like a Star of David, okay? The, uh, what's it, on the Israeli flag, I think. Okay. Well, I like that so much. Let's do this again. Let's take each one of these and add 
another triangle to it, also an equilateral triangle, also having the same proportions as the ones that came before it. And let's just keep doing that over and over and over again. Well, the very first perimeter was 3. The next perimeter went 1 third, 1 third, 1 third, 1 third. So that's P0. P1 is 4 thirds times 3. P2, guess what, is going to be 4 thirds squared times 3. P3 is 4 thirds cubed times 3. And so on. Okay? That means P infinity as if as uh, P goes, or the, the number of side, the uh, iterations goes to infinity, the perimeter goes to infinity, right? The perimeter length of that shape is eventually going to be infinite. Let me show you something else, though. If that side is 1, and that side is 1, and that side is 1, that length there, I can know. Also, it's, it's good to know that those, uh, those little points there don't extend out very far. I could draw a circle here. Okay, let's just give it a diameter. I don't know what diameter to make it. Let's be really conservative. Let's make that diameter, I don't know, 3. So we're absolutely sure it's way bigger than that star there. That's, this is called a Koch snowflake. All right, I didn't invent this. This is called a Koch K-O-C-H snowflake. Well, that circle there has finite area, right? Okay, it's pi r squared. Well, that diameter is 3, so the radius is 1 half or 1 and a half. So I know exactly, pretty much, what the area is. It can't be bigger than a certain number. And this lives inside that, so this must have a finite area too. So this shape has an infinite perimeter and a finite area. So I can, I can add an infinite number of terms and come up with a finite number. Right? That's what a Taylor series does. Okay, so here's what I want to do. I'm going to write out what a Taylor series looks like. Okay, I'm going to write this out, and then I'm going to explain to you how this works. Okay? So I can make an approximation to a function. I'm going to call this T for Taylor. Okay. Given some function x, okay, f of x. And this could be some really gnarly function. I don't know what it is. It, I think it needs to be uh, continuous. There, there's, a, there's a few limitations to this, but not many. Most functions work here. Um, it doesn't have to be very easy to work with. It can be very in inconvenient. It might be very difficult to evaluate. Okay. Okay. All you got to do, if you can take derivatives of this function, and that's that's one of the big requirements. It has to be infinitely differentiable. Ooh, sounds scarier than it really is. It just means you got to be able to take as many derivatives of that function as you want. That's going to be one. And I'm sorry to make you look at the back of my head here while I write this out. Okay, there's what a Taylor series looks like. Now, x0 is just some number, so that's just some convenient number. And mathematicians will say, well, I'm expanding the Taylor series about some number. Well, that's the number right there. A lot of times we pick zero. If we pick zero, it's called a Maclaurin series. And Maclaurin series is a subset of the Taylor series. Okay, so let's, just, that's just some number. Okay, f prime, that's the first derivative. f double prime, second derivative. f triple prime, third derivative, and so on. Okay, that's why it needs to be infinitely differentiable. You've got to be able to write down an infinity of these. What's an infinitely differentiable function? Well, let's see. What about e to the x? Derivative of e to the x is e to the x. The second derivative of e to the x, e to the x, and so on. What about uh, sine? Derivative of sine is cosine. The derivative of cosine is negative sine. The derivative of negative sine is negative cosine. Da -da 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 -da. Forever. Sine function is infinitely differentiable. There's lots and lots of infinitely differentiable functions out there. Okay. So anyway, that's some convenient number, and this is just the uh, factorial, right? So 1 factorial is 1, 2 factorial is 2, 3 factorial is 6 because it's 3 times 2 times 1, 4 factorial is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, and so on. You can see these numbers are going to get small really fast, okay? So 
this, this, this thing right here is the difference between x, wherever x is, and this, this um, convenient number you've picked. This is all pretty abstract, so let me give you an example. Let's say f of x, actually let me write, this. Yeah, get rid of that, okay. Let's say f of x equals e to the x. Now I know e to the x is an infinitely differentiable function, okay. By the way, you ever wonder where e comes from? I'm going to tell you here in a second. All right, so f of prime of x equals e to the x, f double prime of x equals e to the x, and so on. All the derivatives are the same, so that's going to make this easy. Let's also say that x0 zero equals 0, okay? That's going to make this... Uh, we got it? That's going to make this a Maclaurin series, okay, which is kind of like a Taylor series. So let's see. My Taylor series approximation of e to the x is going to be, all right, if x zero is zero, what's e to the zero? Well, anything to the zero is one. One plus e to the zero, that's one. Okay, x minus zero, x. Plus one over two, e to the zero is zero x minus 0 squared is just x squared. Oh boy, look at this. 1 over 6 uh, x to the third. Okay, 6 times 4 is 24. So 1 over 24 x to the fourth, and so on. Okay? So this, if you want to know what e to the x is, let's, let's change that now. E to the x is that if it goes on forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. If I type e to the x into my calculator, guess what it's doing inside? Well, this is what it's doing inside. Okay? Because remember, calculators that that circuit in there only knows how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide. That's all it knows how to do when you get far enough down into the sort of the transistor level. And really it only knows how to add and multiply. Well, that's adding and multiplying. That's all that is. So this is how your calculator uh, figures this out. And I'm almost out of time here, so let me do one more thing. Let's say I want this to be 1. Okay. E is an interesting number. It's got all kinds of properties. You can go look it up. Um, but it's irrational. It goes on forever. It's, it's uh, 2.718 to something or other. Okay. Where does that number come from? How do you figure it out? Well, this is how you figure it out. Everywhere you see an x, put a 1. Okay, let's see if I got this right. That's 1 over 120, I think. I'm going to stop right there. I think this must be 720, right? Okay, that's e. If you want to know what e is, that's how you figure it out. Okay, through a McLaurin series. All right, so next video I'm going to show you some mathematical tools for calculating Taylor series. This is, this is the big idea, and uh, it helps now to know how to actually work with this, how to actually make numbers come out of a computer. So that's what we're going to do next clip.